Hi, I'm Scott Patrick in the Dish Studio. If you love MMA and the UFC, you already know about the fighter and the kid. If you don't know them, get ready for something wild. The fighter is former UFC heavyweight Brendan Schaub. The kid is actor and comedian Brian Callen. And together, they host one of the most popular sports podcasts anywhere. Every week, the Fighter and the Kid podcast talks about life and sports and MMA and really what's ever on their minds. You can find the podcast at tfatk.com. That's tfatk.com or on iTunes. All right, Jessica, you're caught up with Brendan, the Fighter, and Brian, the Kid, before their live comedy show at Denver, Colorado's Comedy Works. It was the heat of the moment. The heat yeah. of the what moment. What the fuck, Brendan? Hey, man. I I'm in. singing. Don't need you to sing. That, dude, I'm not mad at that at all. Thanks, buddy. That was a good song. Thanks, man. It's I can... the heat of the moment. Oh, you'd be good. Yeah. So the fighter and... And the kid? They call me the kid. I don't it's age. Confusing. I don't age. I have tight skin. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, tight skin. It, the, the title for the show is obviously his idea. Yeah. I went, you sure the kid? But then you hang out with him. Yeah, he's the kid. Yeah. He's well, the I also, kid. like, on a, on a set of a movie nobody had ever seen uh, or ever will see, I decided, I came back and I said, uh, from now on, I'm not Brian. You will refer to me as the kid. And they would call me kid, and I'd say, it's the kid, please. And so I just never left. Uh -huh. And I gave myself a nickname that didn't really stick. Well, it is now, though, isn't it? I guess so. So you're the diva. Yes. And you're the voice of reason. He's yes. the diva. <laughs> yes. He owns two hundred yes, pairs of I shoes. I like you. He owns Yeezys. Yeah, what you can you do, like man? You're a little jealous. I'm that, not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, I know. I'm jealous of his youth and his shoulder width. <laughs> How much has it helped you, just with your fashion game, being my friend? I, yeah, I, I've stepped up my fashion game, and we're sponsored by by a clothing company, so. This is lilac. It helps you. This is supposed to get capture a woman's eye. This is lilac. Is it working or no? You, you've I not really stopped can't. staring at my torso. Yes, yes. It's a lovely lilac yeah. torso. I dress them well. There's a person up here, too. <laughs> oh, you have eyes. OK. Yeah, yeah see? see? They just, they, they're drawn to lilac, and, and when you're V'd out like I am. V'd out? Yeah, I'm V'd out. It's from pull-ups and sports. I'm sorry. Pull-ups. So your, your comedy tour, mm. we're here at Comedy Works yeah. for the second stop of your tour, is all improv. I don't know how you guys are going to pull it off. It's really oh, I'm hard. terrified. Yeah. I'm terrified. You're really having a hard time thinking on your feet. He's good at improv for a guy who punched people in the face and, and you know caught footballs. And now he's doing improv and hanging with the best of them. It's pretty impressive. Brain trauma, right? man. I mean, does it ever, on your way to work in the mornings, are you ever like, huh, man, this beats a punch in the face? Yeah, every day. <laughs> every day I pray to whoever's in charge of this. The MMA gods. The MMA gods and the entertainment gods. And, uh, man, I, I feel like Andy Dufresne from Shawshank Redemption. I've crawled through the slime and I've, I've made it to Mexico. And this guy was in Mexico waiting. And I was waiting. Me a, I was waiting. He's my Morgan Freeman. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, a, a lot of guys, they get done fighting. And there's not a lot of options. The, the fight game, it's, uh, you know, it is the pain game. And it, a lot of those movies don't end well. So for me, I've been in charge of this movie and I didn't want to end that way. And so I've just been really fortunate. And I linked up with guys like Brian and Joe Rogan, and they've taken me under their wing and seems to be working out. It's funny how tough fighting in football makes you too, because we, we sh were shooting this web series and we had to get on a horse. I had to get on a horse. And Brennan said, let's both get on the horse. And the horse trainer said, well, the horse never had two guys on it. And I go, well, we're not getting on a horse. It's 1,200 pounds of muscle. And he goes, so what? And I said, it'll buck us off. And he goes, oh no, we'll get thrown off a horse. And he wasn't scared at all. And I was like, I'm actually really afraid of that. Actors. I know. Actors. I think you got to protect the 8x10. Where's, where's my stunt double, please? <laughs> get him in here. He's like, whatever. I fought Andre Olowski and Travis Brown. Don't be a baby. Yeah. Yeah. So this podcast has only been around for, what, two years? But two years on Fox, but we started doing it probably two years earlier out of Brian's garage. Like a year earlier. Probably a year, yeah, a year yeah. earlier. We were basically out of Brian's garage. And then just started to pick up steam, and then uh, yeah, next thing you know, we got our own kind of gig going on at Fox and doing a nationwide tour, and we have our own series coming out. Three million now. downloads a month. Is later. that good? I don't know. Is that good? Um, I've read that you're one of the best sports podcasts. Some out there. say number I mean, one. With a no, with a mother. Well, if you of care about rankings, podcast. I've never looked at them. Number one last <laughs> night. But the thing is, he's not competitive is, at all. No, it's it's silly, man. It's whatever. Brendan, when you're with a pro athlete, the co he's a very competitive guy. Not in a bad way, but 
I'm just not, I've never been competitive, but, but talk about consistency. He can sustain an intensity, a ferocity for a long period of time. And he, even like there used to be people at Fox, they give us our own studio. But before that, they used to have other podcasts that would come in and they'd use our studio. And one day Brennan was just standing there looking over at the Ooh. room. And they, these two people were coming out. They had kind of a bad podcast. And, he, and he's looking like he's about to fight. And I go, what's wrong with you? And he said, I don't like that other people use our mics. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He goes, drives me nuts. That should be just our studio. <laughs> I went, oh boy, we're dealing with a And what is it now? now just our, just studio. our studio. Blow it up. Oh, I, didn't, I missed that part. Well, oh. You're older. We kind of oh. do that. Oh, sorry. It's the joints. Be nice. I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's from years of, I throw my hands as well, but street on the street, not the, You're a street not fighter. Not the safety of an octagon. The safety of an octagon. Well, You're dude. street, bro. I street. I'm street. I'm You're street. street. I don't have he's Cal He's the toughest in Calabasas. Sure am. Especially now that Kate Jenner. See ya. You're in. I'll scrap. You're in. That's right. So for, I'll scrap. I'll scrap. Okay. So for people who have not tuned into the number one sports podcast mm -hmm. yet, uh, introduce yourself to our audience. So your background is more in comedy, correct? Yes, comedy. Yeah. So, I mean, I can recite your resume for you if you'd like. I like so that. you got your start on Mad TV. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And then you went on to do a bunch of other sitcoms, uh, yeah. Entourage. Some smaller ones, Sex you and know, the City. I mean, the uh, Hangover uh, One, Hangover Two. How, right how I Met Your Mother. Oh, so you didn't make Hangover Three? I didn't. I'm I was sorry. doing a ride along, I think. At the yeah. Time. You know what? How about this? In fact, I remember why I didn't do Hangover 3. I was scheduled to do comedy works. I believe this is true. And I chose to do comedy works because they wanted me to play another weird character. And I was like, I just don't. It was last minute and I didn't want to cancel on comedy works. Who's your manager? I know. Right? I know. Because you can come back here anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Hangover 3 was a big deal. It's true. It's this true. is the problem. But I'm such That's a consummate professional. And I don't like acting. Well, I'm glad we got that out hey of the way. Hey, man. Thank God. Now you have a, a good podcast. Just keep yeah. it positive, though. Sorry, man. Now, you have a legitimate fighting background as well as a football background. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're an athlete. So yeah. explain to us um, your history. Grew up in Denver, Colorado. Played at University of Colorado football there under the Gary Barnett kind of umbrella. Loved the guy. And then uh, short stint in the in the NFL. By short stint, I mean I had a cup of coffee in Buffalo. And like, cool, good to see you. <laughs> Back on the plane. Like, oh, and but then, Buffalo's so great. I know I it's so while. beautiful. Oh, see Niagara Falls. The best. Yeah. Oh man, I'm so happy to be there. <laughs> be in my face. Especially in the winter time. Um, yeah, so I had a basically a cappuccino in Buffalo. Got a Buffalo Bills hat, flew back home, uh, started to train. Uh, I knew a guy, Nate Marquardt, who was a, a he still is a, a pretty big deal in the UFC, and he's kind of the pioneer. And just started training. And, um, you know, I, I was always a huge fan of the UFC. Most people don't realize the UFC started in Denver in 1993. Get so out of town. I started watching the VHS and stuff like that, and I was inspired by Bloodsport with John Claude Van Damme. So I knew I could do it. I just wasn't sure how, because there was no kind of blueprint on how to do it. Started training, took a couple of fights, and the next thing I know, the ultimate fighter called, and that was kind of my golden ticket to the chocolate factory. And so, yeah, so started fighting the UFC, was in the UFC for about seven years, from ultimate fighter to my last fight, which was last December. And, um, you know, fighting, it's a tough game. I love it, I love everything that goes into it, but a lot of guys get done, and they're so focused, because you have to be, it's such an intense sport. You have to be all in if you're gonna you know, fight other grown men who are professional fighters. You have to be all in. He talked to me about his training schedule. It's mind boggling. It's crazy, and so when you, when you have that, and then you see kind of how this thing was growing, because I was kind of doing both. I was one foot in, one foot out. You can't do that and be a world champion, so. Ronda Rousey. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. for me, um, you know, it's, it's been a blessing to, to kind of have a, a, a way out. And just... I said to him very privately, uh, I said, do you miss fighting? And he went, no. Mm -hmm. There was no hesitation. <laughs> was like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I, get, I, I get more love now. I think when you're fighting, everything's so serious and you're on the countdown shows and you can't really show personality and you have to tell why you're going to beat this other guy up. And it's not, people can't really relate to that. You're almost, you almost look, come off as a bully. And so the podcast, I've always been a silly guy. And now I get a free pass to be even more goofier with this guy. And make money. 
preach. Yes. You know what and I'm so, saying? Isn't um, that what it's about, kids? Money at the end of the day. <laughs> it's the kind of car you drive, huh? And the shiny stuff you wear in your ears and around that's your that neck. That's that Calabasas lifestyle. Yeah. That's that that's Calabasas, me. man. Sorry. Once you retired and you went full into this podcast, did you hear from people like, I had no idea you had this personality or you were this goofy yes. or silly? Yeah, and that's the most satisfying thing because I've never been a serious guy. I've, I was always terrified to fight. I was always terrified to compete. And I, I think a lot of guys, they never talk about that. And for me, it, it's normal. It makes sense that you'd be terrified to fight. And I do have a personality. I'm not this meathead, although I kind of look like a meathead. There's a reason I grew my hair out, you know? <laughs> There's a reason I dress like this. If, you know, my ears kind of give it away still, but uh, I try to Especially stand away from the meathead. In Hollywood, we were at a party, and he was just standing there, and, and he looked at me. This is when you had your head shaved. And, he, and there were all these hipsters and, you know, guys who were thin but cool. And, I was and, in camp. And I had, like, a black eye. He's in camp, and, yeah, he's got scars, and he's fighting. And he looked at me, and he was, I never, I'd love to be that big. I just walk around shoving people for no reason. <laughs> And, Bully, man. and he looks at me, and, he, and first of all, he stands with his legs far apart so he can, like, come so down to your level. And he looks at me, and he goes, hey, real quick, I'm enormous, <laughs> and I don't like well, this. Well, you know what? You, what started, I'd said that, I'm like, God, I don't fit in here at all. <laughs> I have my tattoos hanging out. My ears are all gnarly. I forget what shirt I was wearing. And then there's, like, a nice tray of f food, and some guy, you know, trying to fit in, he goes, hey, big man. Huh? Seconds? I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> He's self-conscious <laughs> of that. He, hey, bro. He got recognized by two famous women. I won't name. They're famous hot girls, and they were like, oh, hey, we like you. And they were looking at him. They were looking at him. And we were eating pizza, and he stopped eating his pizza. And I go, what are you doing? Put away he, like it was Brian's. He goes, ah, oh, can I get a to-go container? And I go, what? I go, what are you doing? He goes, I don't want them to think I'm a fatso. <laughs> I was like, you're insecure. You have L body dysmorphia. Dude, L.A. would do that to you, man. L.A. would do that to you. I've been on auditions. They're like, it's not your face. <laughs> Is there any way you can lose, I don't know, let's yeah. say 100 pounds? Yeah. 100 pounds? We yeah. like you just the smaller version. We like version. you just... They wanted you, you to yeah. trim But they can't down. say, we need you to tighten up. Yeah. Just tighten up. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted you to trim down. I was born this big. I know, it sucks. We gotta figure this out. <laughs> That's right. That's so I'm a weird. vegan now and I do yoga. Yeah. So Hollywood has changed you a little bit. Oh, um, I've gone full Hollywood. Retro. Do if you were ever to I'm go back into one step away from into... Caitlyn Jenner, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's big news. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Podcast just got a lot bigger. Yeah, so, that's right. uh, would you change your nickname from Big Brown to Big What? <laughs> Dude, I was waiting for you. <laughs> Where oh, we go oh, with this one? Like, hey, oh, okay. Big gonna, Brown do for get, you. I'm starting to get excited here. <laughs> Hold on here. What are, what oh, are we I doing? Didn't know here? It was that kind of show. Oh, it's one of those sets. That's I've been dish. here before. Exactly. <laughs> well, I guess I'll take these off. Right. Um. To get to me, you gotta we go changed. through the old guy. We changed his. Yeah. Oh, he's dropping Weathers original. That's right, the old creepy guy. Oh, I'm, I'm the screener. Oh, I taste the soup for the king. Get you know your peppermint I mean. patty on the way out That's from the old guy. <laughs> peppermint patty or 49 married with two kids. Mm, you decide. <laughs> You're in the wrinkles and commitment. I'm your guy. <laughs> wrinkles and commitment. Hey. And look at the way I dance. Who's the big thicky in the corner? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm very supple. Uh, mm. My nickname is the Supple Leopard, but his nickname used to be the Hybrid, but I changed it to Big Brown, uh -huh. and so I think we've already done the change. Well, that's well, what the, can Big that, Brown do for you? Exactly. Thanks, right? UPS. Um, <laughs> yeah, right, that's right. when I figured the the podcast was doing pretty well because I was still fighting. Mm. And Brian goes, "Dude, you're not going by the Hybrid anymore. Like, you can't pick my name." He goes. You're big, you're brown, you're not white, you're Native American, you're big brown. Yep. And so I laughed it off, and then I get on my social media and there's just thousands of people. It's oh, it's stopped. big brown, big brown. So then Brian's like, dude, you gotta change it. So I challenged the fans on the podcast. I said, hey, if you, you guys pick the nickname, hybrid or big brown, if Bruce Buffer gets a thousand mentions, something like that, I'll switch it. And they went way over that. So I was like, all right, we're doing something right here. Nice. So he get, hold on, let's just, Break this down. <laughs> he gave himself the nickname The Kid, and he gave me the nickname Big Brown. That's right. You just dish out nicknames. That's how I roll. Are you All a little right. sensitive to the big? No, I mean, I was cutting a lot like, of weight, and you could have called me like medium brown, but it's not as cool, so I just roll with Big but Brown. But he lies about his weight. He's, he's 255. 
It's Every just his bone it. structure, and it's what it carries. But on your license, it says 195, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I wish. If you ask him how much he weighs, he goes, about 238. I'm like, oh, well, you're a liar, aren't you? <laughs> Thicker than a Snickers right now. Uh, he's, yes. he's a big kid. Mm. Uh, so how did this podcast come around? Did you guys meet on Joe Rogan's podcast? No, we, we actually met on the set of The Ultimate Fighter. I was a coach on there, and they brought Brian in to talk to the, the team. Because, you know, it, it gets very tiring. They're always practicing. So uh, Shane Carwin brought in uh, Brian to talk to the team. I was just getting ready to move to L.A., and uh, Brian was doing stand-up. I went to a stand-up show. We just hit it off right away. It was a straight bromance. Hard. Yeah. We fell hard. Yeah. And yeah. then it's a marriage. We changed numbers. I go, dude, I'm in L.A. next week. And he goes, I live there. Let's get together and just start That's hanging right. out. Where did you have your first wing. date? I think Our first day was uh, at uh, at that, that on the beach in uh, Venice. Mm, it was beautiful. It was so amazing. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa. Oh God! Wait. I read hey, it wrong. I'm married. Stop breaking stereotypes. <laughs> <laughs> so, of all the sports you cover, is UFC your favorite, or it seems to be the For one me. that? I mean, I you know I I know it pretty well. All my friends still fight. Um, so yeah, I think people tune in. Uh, some of the people tune in just to kind of hear the insights because you got to remember a lot of times when you watch these shows, these UFC programming shows, those guys are still with the UFC and you got to realize who pays their bills. You're looking at the bosses of the company here. No one. Dana White's my, not saying. They mm -hmm. can't filter me. Yeah, so I can speak the truth from a very knowledgeable standpoint. And he creates controversy. He really does. If he talks about steroids, if he talks about, you know, uh, all these things, it makes news in Brazil. You know, because you've got to... In gotta, Brazil, gotta, all that? Yeah. It makes news it makes, in Taiwan makes, when he speaks. Well, you're on the front page of their biggest sports publication for, for suggesting that some Brazilians might do steroids. But, uh, you know, like, he can say whatever he wants but because plus, he's plus with the, the game with their so new, long. With their Thanks. new sponsor deal, like, I can comment on that from a legit point of view. I'm not swayed either way. Like, if you're going to buy a Droid phone or an Apple phone, you don't want to go to Apple and hear him tell you how good Apple is. You want to go to a guy who has no skin in the game. Yeah. He's going to give you the truth. Here's the truth. Yeah. I think a cage fighter and a comedian is a good combination. And other fighters, what's interesting is now that the podcast has been so successful, other fighters have tried, and they're all doing their own podcasts, and they're trying to link up with comics. But, you know, it's all <laughs> chemistry. And it, it's, it's just difficult. It's, uh, I, we feel lucky in that sense. We, we, we found something here. And I'm holding on to it. I got it in the headlock. I've been in this business so long, nothing lasts. Nothing. TV show. Stand-up is the one thing. But, but, but this is something that's just we're going to be able to do forever. So I'm holding on to it. Is that a good, is that good technique? It's right? decent. we got to think of a different name, though. I wish you guys could see what I'm Cause, working cause with. Because pretty soon no one's going to remember you as a fighter. You're going to be older, so you can't be the kid. No, nope, I'm going so on testosterone. Like, I'm gonna get on steroids and be so big and purple. Well, that'd be sick. So it could be like medium brown and the and the purple adult. guy. I don't the know. Yeah. Guy. And the 65 year old who's just his veins, whose head looks like a summer squash. I like wrinkle in the guy. Oh, wrinkle in the guy. Wrinkle in the guy. Wrinkles in the guy. Oh. Who's that? Nah, that's the guy. Wrinkles. That's that's wrinkles. Oh, that's wrinkles. Look at him, man. That's the guy. Looking pops, wrinkly, bro. Popping Viagra <laughs> like Tic Tacs. There he Think is. Think of the sponsors you could have. Oh. Since Hollywood has changed you so much, yeah. if you were to go back into the fight, do you think your pregame speeches with the other fighters would change a little bit? Do you think they'd be funnier, more intense? Um, That's kind of showy, right? You, you, know what, you know what's tough is because you, you get a little jaded with the business of fighting. Like when I was coming up, everything was great. Whether they paid me $100 or $100,000, everything was great. Fighting, doing what I loved. And then one day I think I woke up and I was like, wait a second. I feel like I'm worth more than what's going on here. I and I think once fighters, once fighters realize that, yeah. and a lot of them are starting to now, um, it's a good thing. So whenever I talk to a fighter, it's really, it's tough because I'm not asking like, how are you doing for the fight house camp? I'm more business side. What are you doing for your, for your t-shirts? What are you doing uh, markability? What's your social media like? What's your plans after this? So I changed a little bit. The UFC should have hired you for they should hire you for marketing because you're that, that's yeah, what he's so side. good at he's got he's got he's just a really good businessman that's the fundamental difference i think also between you and a lot of fighters is that you always had a business mindset when he talks to fighters it's really interesting because you know fighters it, do, it demands so much mm -hmm. and they never think about what's going to happen after fighting and, and it's not a pretty ending for most it, people it, that's pros and cons though because i probably would have been a world champion if i wasn't so business minded does that make sense yeah mm -hmm. because those guys all they care about is fighting winning the gold 
I was kind of like, hold on here. You know, I'm almost too smart for my own good. Mm -hmm. Which is probably good. Yeah, now, now it is. is. It, now it I is. could slip we out any moment. We sell a lot of t-shirts. Uh -huh. Oh, what's that? Yeah. Oh. That's the collab shirt we did with Wait. On It. Okay, who's the? Well, that'd be the big brown, big brown, and then I'm the Caribbean Tiger. Uh -huh. The Caribbean like Tiger. <laughs> Again, he gave himself that nickname. The I'm Caribbean. from. I like wrinkles in the guy. I can't wait. I for like that. wrinkles that, in the that guy. Wrinkles in the out. guy is hilarious. It's uh -huh. wrinkles in the guy. Wrinkles in the guy, bringing you fat talk. Good show, buddy. Good stuff. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Love you guys. Love you guys. This is The Final Kid. We're out. We're going to talk to Brian and Brendan about UFC 197 in just a moment. 197 on April 23rd will be one of the biggest fight nights of the year. John Jones is back after a year out fighting for the light heavyweight interim title. And in the flyweight division, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson will defend his title for the eighth time against the unbeaten Henry Cejudo. UFC 197, Saturday, April 23rd. And of course, the best place to watch it, wherever you are right now with Dish Pay-Per-View. Pre-order the fight right now on channels 473 and 474. Get it online at mydish.com slash UFC, or just give us a call right now at 1-877-DISH-PPV. Jessica talked to the fighter and the kid about 197. Now this was before Cormier dropped out, so as you might guess, they had a lot to say. since I have you guys here to talk about UFC 197. Okay. What do you guys think? Do you think that Jones is coming back in better shape from his Instagram? He looks like he's... Well, from his Instagram, yes. Mm -hmm. He's lifting. And it's funny to me because John was the best fighter in the world, you know, all before this. Now that he's serious and, you know, I think John took things loosely, but now it's been taken away from him. He's taking it way more serious. Think how tough he was before. So on this card, 197, you have John Jones, to me, pound for pound, number one. And number two, you have Demetrius Johnson. So you have number one, number two, pound for pound, best guys fighting on one card. And, you know, for John, he's fighting Daniel Cormier, who is the champ right now because John had his defaults, issues. Yeah, yeah but uh, I just, and I love DC. I work with DC. I just don't see what DC's gonna do different to get a, a, a better result. And, and now we know John, uh, he's ready, he's taking this more serious, so we're getting a better version of John. I just don't think DC can make changes to beat him. But some, what some, I was talking to a bunch of fighters yesterday, we were, and what was interesting was that they, there was this idea that John was never that focused in practice, apparently. Like, he was an improviser. He gets in there and does things you're not even sure what he's gonna do. And now that he's taking it very seriously, you wonder sometimes if that's going to tighten him up mentally and he's not going to be as free and as improvisational. It's a, it's a kind of a lame theory, but sometimes that can, that can cause guys to, sometimes they're their best when they don't care as much. I think it's your only hope if you're fighting a guy like John. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, he, no he's going to be worse because he's real serious and dedicated. And he's stronger. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah that's going to do yeah. it. Yeah, he's going to lose now. Yeah. But do you think that he's got more riding on the line because of the way he did have to break away from the UFC? How, you know, he, he got his but he, title He's always believed he was him. a champion, right? Like, like, you can see the confidence in his... And, and everybody I talk to, fighters, that from him to guys who've trained with him, like heavyweights, all of them, to like, chill something, they talk about... Yeah, you trained with him. Yeah. They talk about how strong, how special an athlete, how just different he is than everybody else. I just think John's... He's just on another level, and... We've seen DC and John fight before, you uh -huh. know? So it's a great fight, it's a compelling fight, and it has to be done because DC has the belt, but uh, John's a special, special guy. We've never had anyone like him inside the Octagon. To me, he's hand, hands down the best that's ever entered the Octagon. To see him take Daniel Cormier around the hips and take him down twice, I think with a double leg. Yes, against the fence. Like what? And you're going to sit down, I'm going to put you on your back. And then he went like that to his head. And special, I went, special guy. Oh, no. Special guy. Oh, he's that good. And then oh, you got Demetrius. Like, the Burberry beefcake yes. right there. You got Demetrius Johnson, who, you know, our good friend uh, Joe Rogan says is the best pound for pound. That's where we disagree. But Demetrius Johnson is a guy at, you know, that flyweight who's just destroying guys. <laughs> destroying guys. Yeah. So uh, with, Henry, with Henry Sudahuda, who's undefeated, gold medalist in the Olympics. He hasn't shown anything to me yet why he should beat Demetrius Johnson. 
he's won all his fights basically, you know, by decision, especially in the UFC. He had some finishers outside that, but the UFC is a different game. And Demetrius Johnson, as good as a wrestler Henry is, I just don't think his striking and mixing up is he, he doesn't have the answers for Demetrius. And do you, do you think he's got the um, experience under his belt? No, yeah. no, not experience, especially at a championship level. People go, well, he has a gold medal in the Olympics. Completely different game. The pressure of being a champion in the UFC, especially at Demetrius Johnson's level, is insane. People think they want it. But that, that amount of pressure and you have everyone gunning for you, it takes a special character to, to defend that belt and be that guy. And I don't see Demetrius losing his belt anytime soon. I'm also always amazed when I talk to you about how the MMA gods don't care so much about your, your gold medal in wrestling. It's an awesome thing. In pot of like such an incredible feat, but mixed martial arts is such a different sport and fighting form. So you can have world champion kickboxers, and somehow they just they're having to deal with wrestlers. Then you get world champion wrestlers, and they have to deal with a guy who can just buzz saw you with his legs, his elbows, his shins, his feet. It's just different. Mixed and martial arts. I truly believe mixed martial arts is the most difficult sport in the world to be good at, because there's so many different aspects of the sport you have to work on. If you are a great wide receiver, you have to run out, run your routes and catch the ball and you've got to block, but there's, there's a set thing to do. When you're a mixed martial artist in the UFC, not only do you have to know how to wrestle and be a submission specialist and be a boxer and be a kicker and all that other stuff, but the game is evolving so quickly all the time that if you don't have an amazing team behind you as well and they're always pushing you and changing your game up, you're going to lose. You're just going to, there's always somebody out there and the margin for error because they, the gloves are that big and these guys can hit so hard, especially in the heavyweight division. Your margin for error, you make one mistake, you can get put out with a jab mm -hmm. or just a great, just somebody hits you in the back of the ear, good night. Mm -hmm. It's very different. And I would imagine that you have to really specifically train for each fighter. Like, if you're, if I were to fight Ronda Rousey, I would need to train to avoid the armbar at 100%. But, but it would be guys, different for guys every are so fight. good now. Yeah, guys are so good now. You know, the the day of being a good wrestler and getting it done, that's gone. Like the people we're talking about, uh, Demetrius Johnson, Henry Cejudo, although he's an amazing wrestler, th these are the two best in the world at mixed martial arts. So take all that out. John Jones is the best mixed martial artist in the world. DC was on the national team for wrestling, was an Olympian. It doesn't matter. John took him down. So it's mixed martial arts at its finest. So as the sport grows and evolves, we're going to get guys who don't come from a wrestling background, who don't come from a boxing background. They come from a mixed martial artist background. And that's when you get athletes like the LeBrons and the Serena Williams getting in the sport. And then you're going to see some serious you, you will, You will if the UFC can figure out a way to compensate these fighters. I don't think you'll see super athletes in the UFC because I don't know as a fighter if I were if I had the skill set and I wanted to do MMA, if my kid had that, I'd look at my kid and say, you're not gonna be if you want to be a mixed martial arts artist in the UFC, I hope you enjoy having a roommate when you're in your thirties unless wow. you're in your in the top three. Hey, you know? look at me. Your kid in Calabasas, you ain't gonna have to worry about it. You know it. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It, it, they, they just have to figure out a way to create a compensation and incentive structure that brings in the big athletes. It's professional sports. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not for everybody. I would watch him spar with giants. People don't understand that headgear doesn't do much. You're, you can get knocked out at any minute, and they're swinging for the fences on each other. I was like 500 pounds of meat in the cage. I was literally like, ah! It was the craziest thing <laughs> I've I ever said, seen. I said, see ya. Yeah. And now I tell jokes with this guy in the room. Yeah. Nice. Good yeah. move. Yeah. You guys are a wealth of knowledge. I feel like people who love sports will obviously gravitate towards you, but people who want to know how to talk about sports and be entertained would like this podcast as well. That's what it seems like. That's what we do. That's how do they what, find it? How do they find it, Brendan? Well, iTunes is pretty easy to find it. You just search The Fire and the Kid. And then Stitcher. our website, tfatk.com. We have all our episodes on there, videos on there, gallery, shirts, merchandise, everything. tfatk.com. Tfatk.com. That looked out kind of nice. Yeah, right? Yep. Tfatk.com. But we're on every, I mean, any, any Stitcher radio, any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're also on tour. If yeah, it's not sold out. Nationwide tour, yeah. We're in Texas, we're in the Midwest, East Coast, New York, we've Boston. Sold out every, we've sold out every venue we've done. It's kind of exciting. So. Pretty cool.
Congratulations, you yeah. guys. Yeah, thanks to the fans. I feel very fortunate to have you guys come and spend some time with us here. So thank, you. thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you so we much. love us some dish. Dish it up. The Fighter and the Kid is a weekly podcast, and you can get it for free at tfatk.com, on iTunes, or wherever you get your podcast. And we're getting ready for UFC 197 on Saturday, April 23rd, and of course, the best place to watch it, wherever you are right now, with Dish Pay-Per-View. Pre-order the fight today on channels 473 and 474. Get it online at mydish.com slash UFC, or just give us a call at 1-877-DISH-PPV. Our thanks to Brendan and Brian, Catch up with The Fighter and the Kid every week at tfatk.com or wherever you get your podcast. And don't forget to watch UFC 197, two title fights on Saturday, April 23rd with Dish Pay-Per-View. In the Dish Studio, I'm Scott Patrick.